Previously on The Bill. Look, I use a website, and uh, one of the uh, girls, Justine, listens to what I'm thinking. My wife doesn't know about the website. I want to know what's happened to my husband, Ryan Jones. The report will show nothing except the prisoner became difficult after stalking a prostitute. I don't believe it. Excuse me, sir, can you get back in the car, please? I thought I'd seen the back of you yesterday. So what, have you broken down? Have you seen the traffic jam you calls in? Run out of petrol. OK, put it in neutral, we'll take the handbrake off and we'll push it, all right? Won't be a minute, sir. Sorry. Sierra Oscar from 54, lost in the last 30 seconds, suspect for murder, Ryan Jones. <laughs> Journalist, that's all we need. Tell me about it. Anyway, her name's Connie Jones, and the FME believes she was probably killed by blows to the head. The husband, Ryan Jones, was driving the car, and then he ran off. Now, I've got officers searching the area, on the ground and in vehicles, and Barton Street, they're doing the west of Hanforth Road. That's what we're looking at, a domestic. Oh, some domestic. Who found the victim? Uh, Smithy, he's up there somewhere. Yeah, it's Jones, Ryan Jones. It'll be in the custody records and the imaging system. He came in yesterday. It's, it's Philbert Road, I think, over. So you know him? Well, he came into the nick yesterday as a witness on a case that Phil and Joe were working on. We had a bit of a mouth on him, we had a few words, and I let slip in front of his missus he was using an internet sex site to get his kicks. So she was happy about that. Yeah. So what happened here then? Well, I was responding to a call out and I got stuck in traffic. It turns out it's the cause of it, it's just sitting there blocking the road. I go to push the car, and that's when I noticed the blood on the boot. And when I look up, he's done a runner. Did he say anything? No, not really. I suppose he seemed a little bit distracted and I should have spotted that, but uh, I was just trying to get the car moving. He must have been trying to dump the body. River? It's not far, is it? from Sierra Oscar. Go ahead. The address of Ryan Jones is shown as 27 Filbert Road. Over. Yeah, we see. OK, you and Mickey check it out. But take it easy, cos he might have gone back there. I'm going to get on to the CSE. You might be walking into a crime scene. See what you can find. You know the routine. Go. You walk on? Yeah. Got someone left in a hurry. Not going back in one. Whoa. Looks like we've got ourselves a murder weapon. Give me that description again. Uh, I see one male, dark brown hair, average height, wearing blue jeans and a red anorak. Is it me or do the words needle and haystack leap to mind? Moving in, it's from Sierra Oscar. Possible sighting of Ryan Jones on Halford Road. Over. Well, teach me to speak to you soon. Sierra Oscar from 483, show us dealing. Right, straight through to the kitchen. OK, Sarge. Well, I'll be in the living room. Okay. Neighbours said that they were rowing off and on all night. Eventually it went quiet about two. Yeah, I bet it did. 
Given the amount of blood, it must have been a pretty frenzied attack. Yeah. Presumably he puts the body in the car to cover the night. Cleans himself up, changes his clothes and uh, sets off in the morning to dispose of the body. Yeah. What did you say he was down at the Nick Pierce today? Oh, he was connected to an assault that took place at an internet sex business. They weren't exactly implicated? Not to the assault, no. He was stalking one of the girls called Justina. He got to know one of their web chat lines. So his marriage weren't exactly rock solid, was it? Well, I've got a work address for him. It's a gas company call centre. You say his missus was down at the station yesterday? Yeah. Maybe she took exception to his extracurricular activities, eh? Yeah, happy couple. Oh, here, look. At least they try to leave the country. Sam? That's Sam, all right. Might head in towards the tube. Station manager, quick. Over there, over there. All right, mate. Thanks. Aston Hill Police. The northbound train that's just left. Can you hold it at the next station? Uh, yeah, I'll get on to it. Sierra Oscar from 275. Suspect has boarded a tube heading north from Charing Cross Station on the northern line. She'll be at the next station now. Over. Can we access the CCTV there? Uh, yeah, I should be able to. What we got? Fair dodger or terrorist? We had a suspect. Here we go. Ryan Jones is travelling north on Northern Line towards Leicester Square. Any cars in that vicinity? Sierra Oscar from 54, near location. Show me a sign. Where is he? Well, maybe he's not getting off. There he is. He's taking his jacket off. Suspect has removed red jacket. Better get a move on, Smithy. What's he doing? He's not got a ticket. Oh, this to... 54 from 275. Suspect is leaving by exit 5 and he has a firearm. Repeat, suspect has a firearm. Yep, yeah, heard you the first time. And then he pulled a gun on me. There he goes through the tunnel. Be warned, he's got a gun. Where did he, he go? Went that way. Yeah, the cop is after him, mate. <laughs> Ryan Jones was very angry when he left here yesterday, is that right? Yeah. Saying so I was having a mare of a shift and he ended up spending longer in custody than he should have. You know, they probably started round as soon as they left here. You don't know that. What really gets me is that 
I was with him this morning, and yet I let him give me the slip. How were you supposed to know he had a body in the boots? But the best kind of coppers are supposed to have a six cents for this kind of thing, aren't they? Sorry, we're not clairvoyants, are we? I'd happy to come. OK, let's make a start. Suspect's name, Ryan Jones. His wife, Connie, was the victim. Have we informed the deceased family? Yeah, an FLO is on the way to her parents now. Good. Probable cause of death, repeated blows to the head. Possibly with a meat mallet. Fingerprints, Mickey. Matches Jones. Now, although Jones hasn't got any previous, he was at the station yesterday as a witness on another case, yeah? Yeah, Jones was briefly arrested on suspicion of assault. He'd been hanging around the premises of an internet sex site where the assault took place. He was later cleared of any involvement and gave us information which led to the culprit. Anything unusual about him? Not really. He was wound up and uncooperative, but then again, who isn't? His wife came and picked him up. And what were they like together? Not great. But then she had just found out her husband was using a girl on an internet sex site. Right, well, he's killed once. We now know that he's got a gun, so he's obviously in a panic state. We need to find him ASAP. Gina, what's the school uniform? Oh, we've got officers on the streets, Indian 99 circling the area, and three Trojan units in the vicinity. Good. So beyond that, we need to find out where he might go next. So that's family, friends, regular haunts, Mickey. Yeah, we've got an address for his mum. It's on Rudd King Road. Other than that, as far as we know, there's no family remaining. He also works at a gas call centre. Well, that's a start. Gina Smith, can you talk to the mother, see if he's contacted her? Get together a list of any friends he might have. Mickey, you get down to where he works, see if you can find anything there. And it also might be worth contacting the woman he was communicating with on the internet. Yeah, Justine Palmer. She's no longer at the business, but we're looking for a forwarding address. Are we going to go public with this, sir? I don't think so. Informing the media there's a gunman on the loose might make people panic. So far, he's only used his gun to threaten someone. He hasn't fired a shot in anger yet. Well, let's hope he stays that way. Right, contact at all time. Back up when necessary. Extreme caution. Let's do it. Okay. Right, how do you want to play this? Well, let's hold off revealing anything until we get a handle on what his mum knows. He might even be here. My mum would be the first person I'd call if I'd get in trouble. Well, mum wouldn't. We also need to find out about Ryan and Connie's relationship, any previous domestic or history of violence. Mrs Jones? Yes. I'm Inspector Gold and this is Sergeant Smith from Sun Hill. Um, could we come in? Yes. Hello. We wondered if you'd seen Ryan recently. Why? Well, I haven't seen him for a couple of days. Is he is he all right? Don't worry, um, can my sergeant have a little look upstairs? Uh, please do. It's just that we'd like to ask Ron a few questions about an incident that took place early today. Oh, God. Thank you. Um, have you talked to him at all in the last 24 hours? I, I called him yesterday morning. Asked if he could pop in at the weekend to fix a tap. And was everything all right with him? Yes, fine. What is this? What kind of a, an incident? Is he in trouble? It's about his wife, Connie. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Mrs. Jones, but her body was found early this morning and we suspect that she was murdered. It's obviously very important that we speak to Ryan. Have you any idea where he might be or how we could get hold of him? Does he have a mobile number? He'll be at work, won't he? We are trying his workplace, but is there anywhere else that you can think of? He'll be devastated. When exactly did you last see him? Day before yesterday. He popped in to check if I was okay. For any particular reason? Uh, he came round the same as he always does. Since his father died, Ryan's been a real sweetie. He, he pops in twice a week, without fail. And how did he seem? Fine, in good spirits, full of his promotion. He works for the gas company, yeah? Uh, he hasn't been there long, but his bosses have really taken to him. It'll be quieter in here. Is Ryan OK? When did you last see him? The day before yesterday was his last shift. How was he? Not great. It's uh, never ideal, working out your notice. I didn't know he was. 
He's only been here eight months, but we had too many complaints from the public. Company policy is two verbal, one written warning. He'd had both. What did he do? He just wasn't very good at his job. His phone manner wasn't great. We'd had complaints from the customers. Ryan's not exactly Mr. Charisma, you know. God knows what went on inside Ryan's head. Still waters and all that. I was never quite sure of him, to be honest. Was it? Guy in his 40s working in a call centre. Just seemed odd. Most of our staff are in their 20s. A lot of them are students. He just didn't fit in. And he could freak people out. How do you mean? Well, he'd just lose it over nothing a couple of times. Uh, his computer would crash or something and he'd just go, hey, I'd have to take him to one side and calm him down. I mentioned he should see a therapist friend of mine. Do you think I could have that number? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I've got a card here as well. If he gets in touch, can you give us a shout? Of course. He's, um, screwed up big time, hasn't he? You don't seem that surprised. Nah, not really. There's something about him. He just didn't quite fit, you know? How would you describe Connie and Ryan's relationship? Were they close? What do you mean? They were happily married. Of course they were close. Had they been married long? Three years. And recently, how did they seem together? Everything was fine. There was no particular strain on their marriage recently. There's no history of difficulties. No. Not at all. They were planning on starting a family. Connie had all sorts of ideas about what they would do and where they would live. Plans for the future. And how was Ryan about that? Well, he never actually mentioned it, but I'm sure he was fine about it. Why are you asking me all this? You don't think that he was responsible, do you? I'm afraid we have to ask Ryan some questions. Ryan wouldn't hurt a fly. He's kind, he's gentle. There must be some mistake. There is no way that this has anything to do with Ryan. Mrs. Jones, Connie's body was found in the boot of Ryan's car. We discovered her after he ran off. Bus. That's just here, a few streets away from the tube station where he pulled a gun. What route does the 145 take? Well, he heads east towards the city. That's away from his mother's house, but not from the call centre where he works. And we've contacted the bus company about stopping the bus. We've also recovered his address book. When we get it, we'll contact everybody in it, see if he's approached them. Any luck with the mother? Well, not really. He's clearly a good enough son and give or take half decent husband. And according to his mum, but she is his mum, he's never really trouble in his life. Well, maybe not at home, but he's falling apart at work. He's working his notice. We told his mum he's just been promoted. So you're talking about a fantasist? Well, he's definitely someone who's very isolated. He don't make any friends at work, so... We're certainly not talking to the people closest to him. Could be why he's turning to web chat lines. So he's a loner, trying to fit in, but not making it. And for some reason or other, he buys himself a gun. So we need to know how and why. Right, well, he's bought himself a gun, but he also goes and sees a therapist, I mean... Well, they're conflicting signals. I mean, buying a gun's an act of desperation. Seeing a therapist is a cry for help. That therapist's on the way in, by the way. Mom, the CCTV from the bus company shows that Jones got off the 145 on Slade Street about 25 minutes ago. All right, we'll get you in from there. Miss Ponting? Hi. I'm DC Webb. Uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, as I said to you on the phone, it's about Ryan Jones. Well, like I said, there's not much I can tell you. It's kind of... Confidentiality. I do understand that. Yes, take a seat. Thank you. The fact is, Miss Ponson, Ryan's wife's been murdered. I really do need to speak to him. So I'd appreciate your help. Anything? I mean, can you tell me the last time you saw Ryan? Two, three weeks ago. Does he have a regular appointment with you? I only saw him twice. Third time he didn't turn up. And what does he talk about? You know I can't tell you that. 
Look, it's my job to find him. And it's mine to respect his confidentiality. I thought it was your job to help him. But doesn't matter what our job descriptions are, does it? This is about people being killed. Did Ryan kill Connie? Yes, we think so. And he's on the run at the moment and he's armed. If we can just work out what's going on in his head, we might be able to get a handle on what he'll do next. OK. Yeah, he talked to me about everything. Work, home, family. His dad died about six months ago, and that hit him hard. He said he was devastated, but he had no one to talk to. And what about his wife or his mum? He said he couldn't go to his mum because she was hurting and he just had to be there for her. His wife? Well, all she did was talk about herself, what was going on in her life. All he ever did was listen. So when he wanted to get something off his chest? Like a lot of people, Ryan avoids conflict. I think that he bottled everything up. I told him that he had to confront his issues or... Well... You know, Ryan's been a disaster waiting to happen. How would you like to help save a child's life? All it'll take is two minutes of time. No, no, just... How do you know? You don't even know which charity I'm from. I'm from a group which provides aid for children orphaned by war. I told you, I just don't kill. Oh, come on, you seem like a nice guy. Some of these kids, you don't know anything! Fuck off! There was one person that he said that he could talk to. Justine? Yeah. He said that he could really open up with her. And he loved Connie, but that he could only ever really be himself with Justine. You know, he never actually met her. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, she works for, like, a sex web chat line. <sighs> Can't communicate properly in his marriage, so he projects the relationship that he needs onto a relative stranger. Connie found out about her yesterday. Well, he wouldn't like that. Made to feel bad about the one thing that made him feel good. That could be a trigger. What do you think he'll do next? Continue to self-destruct. Lash out. Maybe take revenge. Jones could have got anywhere in 45 minutes. Yeah, I know. Could be chasing that tower all day. Do you think he's got some kind of plan? I wished. I think he's making this up as he goes along. Yeah, Oscar to all units. The man's been reported for aggressive behaviour in Siskin Square. Any unit show dealing? If he got off the bus at Slate Road... Which is not a million miles from Siskin Square, come on. Share Oscar from 54, show us dealing, over. Oh, come on, move! <laughs> Trojan are on standby, an Indian 99 on its way, all right? Let's have a look around. Gina, 11 o'clock. Yes, yes. that Trojan? Sarah Oscar from Sarah Oscar won't have either on Ryan Jones and Siskin Square. Oh, and there's kids as well. There's a lot of people. Just take it easy. Now, whatever's happened, we just want to make sure that no one else gets hurt, all right? We just want to talk to you. Well, yes, that's just it. I don't understand what's happened. I don't get any of it. OK, then let's take things one step at a time. Put the gun down for me, Ryan. Enough people have been hurt. Put the gun down and everything will be fine. Everything was fine. I mean, Connie was fine. I was fine. I know how you must feel. How upset you are about Connie. I understand. What? How? How do you understand? You understand nothing! I'm here to help. I had a job. I had a home. I had a wife. So you went and said what you did. You. You! Said about Justine in front of Connie, and you said it like it was something dirty, but it wasn't, you know. It wasn't. No, it was special. 
mind. Whatever I said, I said in the heat of the moment. I wasn't thinking. What do you mean you weren't thinking? The important thing is that you put the gun down and you give yourself up before you no, get into any this more isn't trouble. My fault. I love Connie. No, it's your fault that she's dead. It's a Brian. You know you've been having a bad time recently, you know? None of this would have happened if it wasn't for you! You! Trouble at work? My wife wouldn't have found out about Justine, and she wouldn't have had a go at me. We wouldn't have rowed, and she would not be dead! Well, let's just take this one step at a time. No! You stay back! There's no way out. Come on, we've got armed units in the area. Now, come on, give yourself up, Brian. It's over. No, it's not! Step back. Stay back! I'm gonna give myself up. Uh -oh. Ryan, stop! <laughs> no! Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 1! Go ahead, Sierra. Right, mate, just try and last still. Honestly, it's just in square. Gunshot wound! You all right? Yeah, fine. You know what Ryan said was rubbish, don't you? Let's just hurry up and get it, mate. Gov, is there any news from the hospital? Well, one of the victims is critical, the other's stable. All right, Mia, contact the media. We're going public with this. Make it clear the suspect is armed and dangerous and shouldn't be approached at any cost. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Where is it, Jack? Well, Indian 99 had him on Vincent Street a minute ago. Have you any idea what his next move might be? He's very confused. He doesn't know where he is. We've got some information on the gun. Apparently, he bought it off somebody he met on the internet a couple of months ago. Well, he certainly didn't look like he knew what he was doing with it. Well, he's highly volatile. He's just looking for someone to blame. Yeah, me mainly. He thinks that none of this would have happened if I hadn't let on to his wife about Justine Palmer. He's absolutely certain it's my fault his wife is dead. No, sir, that's what he wants Smithy to think. Could Justine be a target? Could he be looking to blame her? I don't think so. We've talked to her now and she can barely remember him. He wouldn't blame her anyway. She was his only outlet. And the therapist said that he tried to project like a fantasy relationship onto her. So what else did the therapist say? That he could lash out and take revenge. So what are we saying? He might go after Smithy? I think we should consider that as a possibility. Oh, well, my day's just getting better. Ryan Jones has just turned up at his workplace. Right, I'll contact India 99 and Trojan. Smithy, you stay here. You need to get yourself cleaned up. Uh, but sir, that's an order. This is not about you, you know. Isn't it? Ryan has gone to his place of work for some reason. It's got nothing to do with you. Okay. We arrest him there, end of. Thank you. Yeah, I do know. Then what's your problem? That if I was slightly more professional yesterday, Connie Jones would still be alive. I'm sorry, we are not responsible for other people's actions. But I'm supposed to be helping people, not triggering nervous breakdowns. Ryan was an accident waiting to happen. Which is all the more reason that I should have spotted it. I think like that, you never make it to work in the morning. What's your point? My point is that sometimes our actions have consequences that we cannot predict. It goes with the territory. Look at my back catalogue for mistakes. What do we do about it? We don't think about it. It's like tightrope walking. If you look down, you're a dead man. The trick is to get your head up and keep on walking, all right? When did you leave? Uh, just after I rang you. After your early visit, I asked everyone to keep an eye out for him. One of the call workers saw him come in. Did you speak to him all? No, nope. just walked straight over here and sat down. He was obviously after something specific, then he just left again. Any chance of accessing what he was trying to get into? Yeah, should be able to. Supervisors have to be able to access everything. It's uh, just a question of overriding the security. You gonna tell me what he's done yet? No, not yet. There you go. Strange, what does he want that for? Dale Smith, flat one, sick of my house, will he throw Smithy? Mean anything to you? Yeah, it does. Come this, Mickey. What? Mickey's on his way over to Smithy's place. CO19 in a couple of uniform. All right, I'll let Smithy know. Well, I think he should remain station bound until Jones has been caught. Well, that's absolutely the last thing you want. He doesn't have any choice in the matter. That's uh, Smithy. What's this? An escort? 
It's important for you to remember that what Ryan Jones did today is not your fault. No matter what you said to him yesterday, this is about Ryan Jones losing it. I'm so you should. What's happened? He's used his gas company's computer to access your address. It's you he's after. So he's on his way to my place? Well, then we've got to get over there. CO19 are onto it. But I want to be there. And I want you to be here. CO19 are dealing with it. There's no need for you to be there. Are you grounding me? Fear and safety, yes. He's definitely been here. To do what? Trash the place? Soon find out. Lounge clear! Where's your clear? Kitchen clear. All clear? Yeah, it is. Cheers, boys. Joe, take it right. Katie, come with me. I'll go left. Place looks okay to me. This doesn't make any sense. He knows Smithy's not going to be here because he knows he's going to be on shift. He's not going to be laying here waiting for him, is he? And he hasn't trashed the place. Anything you could have taken? Like what? Smithy's CDs aren't worth nicking. Roger. Junior and Smithy. Oh, hang on a minute. Smithy? A photo of an older woman sitting on a rock like she's on holiday. Yeah, on my mantelpiece, a picture of my mum and lads are right. It's been smashed on the floor. Vicky, over by my computer there should be a card index box of addresses. Yeah. Stay here. No. You've been told to stay well clear of Jones. Now that's an order, Smithy, and I'm very serious. Yes, yeah? well, so am I. Because it's my mummy's after. So you know what, Gina? You can actually sack me if you like. I really don't care, but I'm going. All right, all right. What about if I get my kit and I come with you? Okay. Yes. Yes, just don't hurt me. Take anything you want. Shut up! <laughs> I'm going to teach your son a lesson. Don't do this. Why shouldn't I? Your son doesn't care who he hurts. That's not true. He does care. It's just his job. He has to make tough decisions day in and day out. Oh, I lost someone close to me. Now it's his turn. I don't understand. No, nor do I. But he's ruined my life. I want him to know what it's like to lose someone close to him. Look, whatever he's done, I'm sure he didn't mean to. I didn't mean to shoot my wife. I didn't mean to shoot two innocent people. But that doesn't change the fact that I did, does it? Hmm? I gave him a chance. I wanted him to admit what he'd done. Maybe say sorry, but he wouldn't, would he? If he thought you was wrong, I'm sure he'd say so. Well, maybe you don't know him as well as you think you do. Hmm? My mum doesn't know me. She thinks she does, but she doesn't have a clue. Oh. No. It's too late. And your son's got to pay. She's in there. Yep. Right. 
Mom. Go on, Mom. Where'd he go? Well, he just told me to lie still, but I think he went out the back. What's going on? What's he trying to do to you? Uh, uh, don't worry about me, Mum. And he said you did something to him. Is that true? No, I didn't mean to, all right, but everything's going to be okay. Oh. Is Smith his mother all right? Yeah, but Ryan got out the back and he's still armed. Right, I'll get reinforcements to cover the whole area. Green? Yeah, green. Let's get you to the station, Mum. I want to stay here. Yeah, but it's not safe here at the minute. They'll take care of you down there, make you a cup of tea and everything. When you're feeling a bit better, they're going to ask you for a statement, all right? No, I've signed an officer to especially take care of you. I want Dale to come with me. I can't, Mum. I couldn't agree with you more, Mrs Smith. I want him to go with you as well. A word, please. Kiss him, will Um, I want to stay here. No. I want to get my hands on it. Will you take it easy? He's the one that's made it personal. He's the one that's crossed the line, and don't you. My mum has just been held at gunpoint. You are here because your mother was under threat. She is now OK. From now on, you have nothing more to do with it, and I mean it. OK, with your mother. Come on. Come on, son. Come on. Scum, you didn't think twice about what you said or what it might do, did you? Hmm? Come on, answer me! You're a copper. Coppers always have answers. Hmm? We've got Smithy and Ryan Jones on CCTV on one of the platforms. Smithy's a gunman. Right. Then close the station and get those people out there now. But you didn't give a damn, did you? No. Then you should pay. What? With a bullet? Got a CO19 thing? They're ready to go immediately. OK. Do you really think that that is going to make you feel better? Well, it might for a minute or two, but then what? Do you feel good about what happened to Connie? When you hit her? When all the anger came out? When you felt that release? Do you still feel good about that now? I'm going to pay for my part in this for the rest of my life. I saw Connie's body. Do you think that that's not going to haunt me? Do you think I don't know that if I hadn't said what I did, that maybe she would still be alive? And that there are two people lying in St Hughes Hospital that I don't know what is going to happen to, but I do know that I am part of the reason that they are there. Do you? How was he when he went in there? Smithy was fine, absolutely fine, sir. I screwed up yesterday. I did something without thinking. We've all been there. You and I 
both know what it's like to do something without thinking and then regret it. The difference is you get to walk away from this. The difference is you beat your wife to death. Ryan, don't do it. Talk to me. Tell me about Connie. Tell me what happened. We started rowing as soon as we left the station. About the internet site, about Justine, yeah? Connie wanted to kick me out. She said she couldn't believe I'd resort to something so pathetic and degrading. And what did you say? The therapist said I should talk to my wife. Justine said I should talk to my wife. So I did. I told her everything about how impotent I felt, about how I never had a say in anything, about how everyone always thought that Ryan's always okay because Ryan always is, but that everyone is wrong. But how I hated my job, but I felt I had to do it because I had to pay the rent. But how I didn't want to start a family with my wife who barely knew me. And I had no one to talk to. And that was why I turned to a stranger. And what did Connie say about that? That's just it. She didn't say a word. She didn't hear a word. Not a single word. She just repeated herself. She said she couldn't believe that I would resort to anything so disgusting as joining an internet sex site. Why, why didn't she listen to me? Huh? Why didn't she care about what I had to say? Why didn't she care about how I felt? Because she felt betrayed. I, I didn't do anything. I didn't, I didn't sleep with Justine. But maybe she felt betrayed because you didn't tell her any of this stuff, because you kept it from her. But it doesn't mean to say that you weren't doing the right thing, trying to open up to Connie. I killed her. <laughs> My wife. What have I done? Well, whatever you've done, killing yourself will not bring her back. No, but it would stop the pain! It would stop the guilt and it would save them the joy. They do not want to shoot you and they won't do anything while I'm talking to you, okay? Killing yourself is running away. Oh, good, because I don't know who I am anymore. I bought a gun just so I could see what it felt like. I felt lonely, so I joined an internet chat site. I killed my wife, and none of that is me. You lost your way, Ryan. But now you need to confront what you've done and give yourself up. All of this, this isn't you. I believe that. I really do believe that. The real you knows that what you've done is wrong, and the right thing to do is to give yourself up. The real you doesn't want to kill himself. If you kill yourself, you're just somebody that lost it. But if you give me the gun, you'll get yourself back. Bill. This is a murder inquiry, Mr. Moore. Ray Moore is very smart. He specializes in extortion and blackmail. His bedroom window overlooks this crime scene. Without his testimony, everything else is circumstantial. Get an ambulance. If he comes after me, it'll be through my family. And I can't take that risk. 